Hey philosophers, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Okay, so when I tell people that I studied philosophy, people often ask me things like, oh, what is the meaning of life? And I would, I would get really annoyed. I would think to myself, philosophy isn't just about the meaning of life. But again, maybe philosophy isn't just about the meaning of life. But it is, in some sense, about the meaning of life. So today, my aim is to get you thinking about life in general and your life specifically. What makes life meaningful in general? And what makes life worthwhile for you? To do that, I'm going to first discuss the arguments of two philosophers, Richard Taylor and Robert Nozick. And if you like self-help, one very renowned self-help guru, Tony Robbins. It's going to be rich with thought experiments, critical thinking, and of course, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so first, Richard Taylor's paper, The Meaning of Life. So do you guys know the myth of Sisyphus? You know, when the gods uh, condemn Sisyphus, their punishment for Sisyphus is to roll up this stone only to have it fall down again. And so he has to roll it up again and again, eternally. Sisyphus is like the icon of meaningless life, isn't it? Nothing he does amounts to anything and he suffers eternally doing it. But, 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 Taylor, Richard Taylor says, okay, let's suppose a modified version of this Sisyphus. What if the gods injected Sisyphus with this substance that magically makes Sisyphus desire the stone rolling? So before, in the original Sisyphus, you know, his state of mind was basically what your state of mind would be if you were punished by the gods to roll up stones forever. But now, after the injection, Sisyphus is super excited and happy to be rolling the stones forever. Every moment, he's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Not because he's fooled into thinking that it will amount to something. No, 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 there is no misconception there. But it's just that he enjoys that process of stone rolling anyway, so it doesn't matter to him that it's going to fall down again. Now the question is, in this modified version of Sisyphus, does his life have meaning? Well, Richard Taylor says yes. He says that since Sisyphus now finds meaning in that activity, his life is now meaningful. But you know, some people might question that and point out nothing about what he does in life has changed. What he does is still pointless. Surely one's labors need to come to something for them to be meaningful. And my guess is that people who say that think that their life is different from Sisyphus's. They actually accomplish things. They have actual goals that they know aren't futile. But Richard Taylor says, hmm, not really. What you think is meaningful activity is actually pointless. You work and work for what? Whatever you do or contribute, would those things last forever? Okay, maybe the significance of that will last during your own lifetime or many life cycles after that. But we must keep in mind that even entire civilizations have crumbled in history. The significance of whatever you do will also fade. Just like Sisyphus's stone, oh my gosh, is this a tongue twister? Sisyphus's stone rolls down again. I mean, the difference is just a matter of the speed with which it falls. If it doesn't fall in your lifetime, your children will follow your steps. We toil and toil, we go after this goal, and then when that's done, another goal, another goal, ah, only to have our children repeat the process. If you look closely enough at your labors, you will realize none of them will last. Oh, okay, Richard Taylor. So all our lives are meaningless? We might as well all just die. No, Taylor says. It really depends on whether you're like the original Sisyphus or the modified Sisyphus. Are you only rolling stones because you have to? Or do you find excitement and interest in your activity? And most of all, will to roll that stone. Now, to support this idea, let me look at my notes here. Yes, Taylor also gives an example of birds. Do you think that the birds that span the globe every year for safety would like it if we eliminated the need for them 
to migrate by offering protection and like permanent homes. Taylor thinks not. Their will to pursue that endless journey is what gives justification and meaning in the birds' lives. In fact, making it so that they don't need to migrate will be their condemnation for it is the doing that counts for them and not what they hope to win by it. Is there something similar in your life? Th that you would rather go through the process than someone hand over the results to you? Now keep in mind this answer that you give now because later we're gonna look at a different thought experiment. So, like with the birds, it is our will to do what we find ourselves doing in life and our deep interest in doing them that matters. So what counts is that we do want to start a new task, a new bubble, a new castle, even though they may ultimately be meaningless. So will, state of mind, feelings, these are the key in Taylor's view. I agree that most activities of, of mankind or like Sisyphus, but I, I don't know if there aren't exceptions. I, I personally see exceptions in my life. Do you find ones in yours? Also, I, I hesitate to think that any activity can find meaning from within. Surely, there are things that no matter how excited you are about it, lack value and are meaningless. Maybe, maybe not. If you're interested in this subjective objective uh, distinction, check out Susan Wolf's paper um, that I will link or put in the description box. So what I found really interesting about Richard Taylor's argument is that it reminded me of, of Tony Robbins. He's arguably the the number one self-help guru uh, in the world. And I too, in my early 20s, uh, would listen to him. And he's famous for saying, the quality of your life is your emotions. Because the quality of life is your emotions. Mm -hmm. It's not what you get, you have a billion dollars and commit suicide. So it's less about the objective state of things in your life, but more about how you feel about them. So if you look at a person who has accomplished a lot of things and has a lot, but feels miserable 90% of the time, versus another person who has um, accomplished less or has less, but, but feels content and happy most of the time, Robbins, I think, would say that the quality of the second person's life is actually greater than the first. But what do you think? Which life has more value? And which one would you want? You know, of course, Taylor and Robbins aren't talking about the same thing. Their approaches and intentions and nuances in what they argue are definitely different. But the modified Sisyphus who got injected with the substance and now feels excited about his life, you know, that, that got me thinking about another philosopher. Robert Nozick and his very, very, very famous paper, The Experience Machine. All right, let's have some fun. Hear me out. So imagine that there's a machine that stimulates your brain into giving you any experience you want. So you choose to go into the machine and then for the next few decades, you're lying in a tank with electrodes attached to your brain. But here is the key, it's gonna seem and feel to you like everything you've ever wanted in life was happening. So I don't know, you could be writing a book that becomes a world bestseller. You could be doing concerts as the K-pop star, marry the love of your life, whatever it may be, it would depend on each person. And even though you choose all of those activities before you step into the machine, once you're in the machine, you don't know that you're in the machine. You 100% believe that whatever is going on is real. And once you run out of the experiences that you've signed up for, you step out for maybe an hour or so to you know, decide the experiences for the next decade or so. Would you choose to go into the experience machine? And if so, what experiences would you choose? So Robert Nozick actually thought that we are unlikely to want to go into the machine. And there are three main reasons he lists for that. And just to, you know, play the devil's advocate, I'm gonna be questioning them. Okay, so first, he said that we want to actually do things and not just have the experience of doing them. 
Do you agree? Is there a difference between actually doing things in reality and and experiencing doing them in the machine? Okay, second, um, Nozick said, we, we want to be a certain kind of person. But when you're lying in a tank, you don't develop character. You don't become courageous or loving. So he said, quote, plugging into the machine is a kind of suicide. Really? But maybe, maybe I'll develop self-esteem when I'm a pop star in the machine. I mean, I'm still going to have experiences. So why wouldn't I develop any character? Huh, but perhaps, perhaps is it because I would only have nice, cushy, fun experiences? And third, uh, we are limited to a man-made reality in the machine, but we might want actual contact with deeper reality. So maybe a man-made reality with its limitations won't allow for genuine spiritual experience or a religious being. Is that true? If I pray in the experience machine to God, would it somehow not be a prayer to God because I'm in a kind of reality that is man-made? Anyway, so for these three reasons, Nozick thought we wouldn't want to go into the machine. And more importantly, this tells us, Nozick thought, that experience isn't all that we care about. We, we need more. We're not just after pleasurable experiences. Perhaps it's important to us that we live actively in contact with reality. Is this true for you? Would you or would you not step into the experience machine? And what does it say about what matters to you in life? Huh, all right, so we're at the end here. Today we started with Richard Taylor's argument that life obtains meaning from within, from our will and state of mind in the activities that we do. If we were to obtain meaning from objective value of our activities, that would be very difficult because we are like Sisyphus. And then after touching on Tony Robbins, we ended up in Nozick's experience machine. I mean, notice that in the experience machine, we'll be very happy, very willing, very excited to do all the things because we had, you know, indicated that we want them beforehand. But still, Nozick says, we probably wouldn't want to go into the machine. We need something more than experience and pleasure. Do you think Taylor would say that life in the experience machine would be meaningful? I hope this video got you thinking about life, its meaning, and, and your life and what matters to you. Please share them in the comments because I genuinely, I really want to know. Also, like and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Thank you very much for watching and have a philosophical week. Bye!